Come on, there. Okay. Jeez. I go through about 15 of these every winter because you know why? I love candlelight. I love it. I just think it's beautiful. So that's why today I wanted to show you how to build one of these candle lanterns. See, this is my first prototype. It was um, made from sandblasted glass. And it's pretty good except um, the joints are a bit rough. And because I cut each of the panels exactly the same size, when I put it together, it came out a bit rectangular. So for my second prototype, I fixed that a little bit by cutting the pieces four and a half inches and five inches wide so that by the time they all went together, the pieces were, were fine. And another thing I did on the second pass was I etched the glass. And I'll show you how to do that. It's really fun. And then there's some soldering involved, which is really fun, and um, glass cutting. So here's the deal. This is a piece of glass, and it's 12 inches by 24 inches. That's um, the size I bought it at. Whenever you're storing glass or working with glass, you always put a, an X out of masking tape in the middle so you know where it is and people can see it. So it's so always good to mark it with the masking tape. And um, the blue masking tape or the green masking tape is specially formulated so that the adhesive won't stick. It's not as tacky. So it won't leave residue on the glass as readily. To cut glass, you use a tool like this. And it's a, it's a little wheel, a little blade, really, that spins. It, it, it takes a little bit of experience to get the hang of it, but it's fun to use. And you always lubricate it and the glass with a little drop of oil. and then. I made a piece and went to all the trouble of etching it, but I hadn't cut it properly. So it's not square, so I couldn't use it. So that's a real drag. So make sure that you cut the gla glass squarely by using this kind of a tool. It's a, a framing square. You use a marker that will stay on the glass or a grease pencil. Make a mark there, flip the thing over, and make another mark at the bottom. There. And then I'll join them like this. So far, so good. Except that I now slimed my entire hand with the oil that I prematurely put in the corner. So I'm lubed, and that's just how it's going to have to stay. All right, now think ahead. I'm going to score this, then I'm going to have to bring the glass over here to this edge and drop it. But all this stuff is in the way. So just move it out of your way so that you have a clear surface. OK, the thing that beginners don't do is they don't press hard enough with these little wheels. It's really important to press hard. And I'm just going to wear the glasses in case anything goes badly wrong. So the first thing to do is make a little like a, I'm just telling that edge of the glass that I really mean it. Because if you don't make a mark at that end, uh, sometimes it, it hangs on you. OK, and then I'm just going to lean into it. A little bit more oil. OK, now don't waste any time in taking the glass over to the edge of the uh, table. Forgot to wear my gloves, but I'll, uh, this glass is really, it's cut really well. But once the cut that I've made has been broken, I, I usually get a bit of a rough cut. Ready? And ta-da! OK, the only problem is it's too tall by a couple of inches. So I have to make another cut. Oh, goody. So there's, you know, the it's not over yet. OK, so. Ah. There have been a lot of trite sayings written about perseverance by stubborn people who wouldn't take no for an answer. My favorite was Thomas Edison, who said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. With an attitude like that, Thomas Edison would have been a lot of fun in a blackout. So once you have all your glass pieces cut, it's time for the fun to begin, if it hasn't already. And um, that's the etching part. So you'll need to get some contact paper. And it's the stuff you put on shelves. 
you can actually get it in clear, and that can be advantageous if you're trying to trace a pattern. Because what I'm going to do is just tear this piece off, place it on the glass, and avoid bubbles, if possible, like that. And then I'm just ready to take um, a pen and trace the pattern on in whatever way I want to do. So, you know, freehand or whatever. If you don't want to do freehand, you want to trace, it's great to get the clear contact paper. If you can't find the clear contact paper and you have a light box from quilting or something like that, you can watch this. It's kind of cool. You take the pattern that you want to trace and you take your piece of glass and you just put it on top like that and you can see the pattern through. Or if you have a piece of um, just a big old storage box out of clear plastic, you can put that over a light bulb and work with that. Okay, so there's lots of options if you want to be a tracing type of a girl, and there are certainly lots of books out there that will give you patterns. So, my footlights. Where are my footlights? Okay, so that's a light box. And also there are books that show all kinds of um, Victorian glass designs. So if you don't trust your own eye, you can copy what they did long ago or Art Deco. Lots of ideas out there. Okay, so back to etching. So this one I already actually drew the thing on, so we'll just work from here. Take a very, very sharp utility knife. Now, I mean it. If it's not sharp, or if you even are suspecting that it's not quite sharp, change the darn blade. All right, I'm not even going to use the blade that's in here. I'm going to change right fresh to a new one right away. Oops. And there, I've got my fresh blade, okay? So about halfway through, I'm going to want to change it again. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go down the line and cut away the outside edge. And it cuts really pretty well. And then I'll cut away some of the detail. I forgot to mention that before you actually put the contact paper on, you should always clean the glass and get greasy spots off it, especially when you put the etching cream on. If there are greasy spots, you end up with a kind of lumpy etch, and you want it to be a nice smooth etch. So the resist is on. That's the contact paper with the design. And this is the etching cream. And it's a good idea to wear these latex gloves. And it's a good idea to protect your eyes in case of any spillage or, sp or splashage, really. Try saying that fast three times. Splashage, splashage, splashage. That's, that's one way to get yourself in a loose mood. OK, so open that baby up and dip it in to the etch. And then you brush over it for the full three minutes that it's on the glass. And you want to make it even as you can so that it doesn't have streaks in it. And you want to distribute it fairly quickly. So there I go. Oops, see, if the glass had been cleaner, see the little tails of the resistor peeling up? That was a dumb thing I did, not cleaning that glass. OK, so the, the etch takes a little while to come off. You have to work with it a bit, because it tends to um, be quite entwined with the molecules on the surface of the glass. So you have to kind of convince it to come off. So look, it worked. Mm. OK, except for that little bit there that I kind of blew because of the vinyl lifted. But other than that, it looks really good. OK, so to put the copper around the edge, you need to go to a stained glass store and get a specialty product called Kaming. This is copper. You can get it in zinc, which is a silvery color, or brass. And the nice thing about it is that it's got a channel pre-bent into it. And the glass just slides into that like this. And then it looks really cool. OK. Copper is really soft. It's easy to cut. 
You can cut it with a hacksaw, which is something most everybody has around the house, or your dad does, or your brother. But if you don't have one of those, consider investing in one of these. It's a rotary tool. It comes with about a zillion of these interchangeable bits, so you can grind, you can cut, you can do all kinds of things with these things. This is a cutoff wheel, and I'm going to use it by clamping the copper down. But because the copper is so soft, when I clamp it, I can pinch it. So I need to put a piece of glass or metal or whatever you have on hand in there so that it won't pinch. And I need to start off with a 45 degree angle. Uh, I cut this one earlier. It's not very good, so I'm starting over. And this is a carpenter's square, or a, rather a tri-square. It's just a little delicate tool, and it'll give me a nice 45 degree angle. Now I clamp it, and then cut it with that rotary tool. Eleanor Roosevelt said that you gain confidence by every experience where you must stop and look fear in the face. Like when you wake up in the morning after a blackout and don't recognize the person you're in bed with. I bet that probably happened to Eleanor Roosevelt a lot. Ah, okay, I got hot and cold running pieces here and everything's fitting together pretty well. Um, some of the cuts have been a little bit ugly, so if they are, you just file them off with a metal file till they're smooth, because cutting it with that cutting wheel always leaves a few little sharp, jaggedy edges. Okay? Now, I'm at the point where I'm ready to solder, and soldering is one of the great things about life, and if you haven't discovered it yet, you're going to be so happy. And um, the only thing is, I have to find a way to pinch those two joints together really well, and these, and these, and these, because I want to solder the whole thing at once. When I put this gun, which or soldering iron, on the joint, it's really hot, so I can't just hold it together with my fingers. So it's really important to just take a few moments right now, find some scrap pieces of wood, and build a little jig that looks like this. And it's just some old, you know, trim from a closet nailed into the exact dimensions that you need. And that way, you can slide this thing in and the jig will hold it for you. Okay, so I'll put my two end pieces on and then just slide this baby in. Now the frosted side is out on this one. I like it that way. You can do it the other way if you want. So I'm gonna slide that in like that. It's really gonna make the whole thing a lot easier. <laughs> or a lot harder. <laughs> If it's not going well. There, oh, okay, wait. Okay. There. Okay, so get everything lined up oh, the way you want it. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, wait. Just if it's going badly, start over before the hot flash starts. All right, that one is in place. <laughs> it just, it's just hard sometimes, isn't it? Life is just hard, and then you just get older, and it just gets harder. OK, look, this is going well. <laughs> I'm in so much denial right now. It's not even funny. Uh, Okay, piece of cake. See, this is why we have a jig, it's helpful. All right, now it's time to solder. So, um, the flux is corrosive, so you want to put gloves on, and you also want to put on um, eyeglasses in case any of it splashes, the eye gear. And you want to check the tip of your soldering iron. It's usually gotten all, um, black again or crusty because the soldered, the old uh, residue just keeps heating up. So that's ready. Actually, let's put the flux on first. And you want to take a, a flux brush and just go over each of the corners a few times so that you know that the flux is really biting. Go over it and over it a few times at each of the corners. 
And uh, if you don't have a lot of fluxing experience or soldering experience, then just go one corner at a time. All right? Now take your solder in one hand and your soldering iron in the other hand, and then heat the metal up. I'm going to hold it on the joint like this. The flux is starting to bubble. I'm going to just touch a little bit of the solder. That's all there is to it. Holding it on the joint, touch the solder. It runs down and then move on. Okay, that's soldering, soldering rules. A wise man said, so long as enthusiasm lasts, so long as youth still with us. If your enthusiasm for a project is waning, you could start to age prematurely. So. No matter how badly it's going, keep your enthusiasm up out of sheer vanity. Okay, I got all my pieces here. Uh, I've got the two etched ones for the etched mood when I want to face that way. And then I've got the two frosted glass pieces or sandblasted glass. So that's the outside. This is another jig, okay? And I'm going to put the outside. So that goes out and this goes out like this. This is a better jig. This works ah, a little easier. Oh, <laughs> I just stop making any comments at all on jigs, okay, because it's just not worth it. All right, so the glasses go back on again because we're soldering, and you need to clamp that piece that just fell over so that that doesn't happen again. So that will keep it upright. And then again, the soldering iron has become occluded with nasty carbonization. Okay, so we'll just tidy that little tender tip up. And then watch that you uh, don't flux too close to the corners now or we'll just end up melting the um, joints that we've already soldered. Okay, so the flux goes on and I'll pick up the iron and I'm going to hold it right against the metal like this and then let the solder run down to try to heat that little. The two pieces of metal, if, if they're not actually touching, you can end up having to use a lot of solder and then it runs through to the bottom side and that's not so good. So just just try to be subtle. Okay, I have just taken the time to do a nice long flux right down the middle of that joint. It's my last one. These three are, uh, one, two, three are all done. And I've clamped this together just really lightly to hold it in place while I do these long joints because I'm working inside the thing. You have to have a nice long solder, piece of solder, so you can reach in with it. You have to clean up the tip of your little thing again, because they do get messy. And then you've got to reach in, and you've got to be heating and looking and pressing your little dinghy around and everything. So just touch the solder, and then there. Okay, now that didn't work very well, so <laughs> rats. It's been going really well, though. Okay, wait. Got, I got a little bit too long of a thing here. All right, so let's just let that flow. There, see, see, it's so great. If you blow it, you just reach back in with the iron again and make it right. Okay, just move that solder around until it's happy. like that. Okay, and then two more of those. And you just you just have to use a little bit of solder and, and, and you'll still get a strong enough joint. Because you're not going to be, you know, packing stuff in these things. They're just for decorative purposes. All right, so put that away. I'll just let that cool for a second. I just want to show you, a lot of artisans are working in copper now because it's such a great metal to work with. It's so soft. And um, for example, Stacy Cameron makes these really eccentric but quite lovely copper wire chandeliers. And then um, Janis Udrovsky is making 
very polished stuff. I love his stuff. It's really pretty. That's a wall sconce. And this is a candelabra, which I don't even know how he did it. The metal is, it looks like it's been hammered like a, a blacksmith would do to iron. And this is a really lovely nude that he did. Um, and it's, it's just plate copper that's been hammered. So it's fun to experiment with it. Okay, this should be cool by now. So I'll remove the clamps and stand her up. Pretty. Okay, and there. Where's the one where I made the boo-boo? There it is, right there. That's just, you got to feel good about that because it's your own boo-boo. You made it. There. It's just, that's so pretty. Okay? Takes a long time to cut all the pieces, but it's really worth it. The great Samuel Johnson said that few things are impossible to diligence and skill. Well, this is something Obi-Wan Kenobi might say, only, of course, it would have to be... Impossible few things to diligence and skill are. But my point is that most people are born with diligence or skill, but not both. So you have to learn which one it is you've got and develop the other. Or find someone who has it and suck them into working with you.